How many of you have started a job and been assigned to somebody to show you around? I can tell you as a nurse, every single hospital that I ever went to work at, I was a, I had a, I had somebody that was a pre, they called a preceptor in the hospital, but they train you on the policies and procedures of the hospital. I've had good, I've had bad. When I was working an agency in Dallas, Fort Worth, I had a lot of different people orienting me to the hospital. When I started working in Greenville Emergency Room in Greenville, North Carolina, I ultimately went out of the emergency center into a satellite center for them, which took what we call the walking wounded. In other words, if you can make it there, you probably didn't need to be up, up in the main part of the uh, emergency room. While I was there, I worked with nurse practitioners and doctors and physician's assistants. I'd had sort of a mediocre run of them. And then I showed up at work one night and this gentleman was there. Mr. Edward Hector, nobody can say his last name. Mr. Edward Hector looks very imposing. Ed Hector retired from the Coast Guard, but he also served in the Navy, in the Army, and in the Marine Corps and the Air Force. Ed was kind of taking it easy when I met him because he only had three jobs. He was the full-time dean at the Physician's Assistant School at East Carolina University. He worked during the daytime in the, at East Carolina University in the uh, student health, and he worked three or four nights a month in the emergency room. And I can't tell you how happy I was when I had to work with Mr. Hector. Big Ed, Mr. Ed. I can't tell you how often I wound up with a doctor that would probably cure cancer, but you would kill him before you would let him touch you because he just had no manner. Ed wasn't like that. Ed took me under his arm and I think it was for a, a, a reason that was a little bit subterfuge. He's a, did I mention that he was in charge of the physician's assistant school? He was trying to get me to become a physician's assistant. So every time we'd work together, if there was any time at all, he'd say, what would you do with that patient? Because generally I take the patient in the room, do a quick assessment, and then he would ultimately get there. And when he'd come out, he'd say to me, what would you do? And we kept playing like that. And so pretty soon I was hitting what he was, what the physician assistant was telling me about 70% of the time. And he kept saying, you ought to go to school. You ought to go to physician's assistant school. You ought to go to, let's say, Ed, uh, I'd have to do another chemistry. Now I got an A in chemistry, but I don't have enough money to bribe two chemistry teachers. I can tell you that much. So Ed and I had a really good working relationship. I, I, I'm sending a copy of this to his family because Ed died in 2016. So I'm not gonna say <clears throat> some of the stuff that he showed me how to do. But suffice it to say that when I ran across him in 1999, he was 62 years old and I was 52 years old and he could run circles around me. Did I mention he had three jobs? He's like the Energizer Bunny, but he was never overbearing. He was never mean. He was never, he was always in a spirit of lifting up. I learned so much from him. Amazingly, after working together with him for three years, he moved into a house that was built a quarter of a mile from me. And guess what? Mr. Hector liked to ride motorcycles. So we would ride motorcycles together. Now you can tell something from a man when he would put up with you when you'd show up at his house with that on the back of your bike. That was a little alien that I picked up in New Bern and I drove it. 60 miles to Greenville on the back of my Goldwing, taped there. 
and I showed up in his driveway and he didn't think a thing of it because <laughs> he, he knew that I was just out there sometimes where the buses didn't run. One of the beautiful things that Ed taught me, I think it was in the year 2000, they call it in motorcycle riding, whatever you do January 1st, you're gonna do the rest of the year. So we made it a point every January 1st to go out. That was before I had that particular gold wing and I was riding a Honda 750 Shadow, which didn't have any fairing or anything. And it was a little cold, but I'd seen all these great bikers with their chaps on. Now, if you've ever seen these fools, and I say fools kindly, what you gotta understand is if it's raining and if it's cold, there's a part of your anatomy that gets no stress, relief from stress. So Ed showed me that wearing, if you're gonna wear leathers, wear full jeans and not chaps because we're not in the Pony Express anymore. I really enjoyed the time I spent with him. And the longer that I spent with him, the more I found out it wasn't just that he enjoyed working. And why I changed the speech today was because he enjoyed life. There wasn't a motorcycle made that he probably didn't have a ride. His, his garage was full of antique cars that he'd restored. Uh, and new cars, he enjoyed life. And he showed me how to enjoy life. And he showed me how to enjoy work. And I was thankful to have a mentor like that. And I hope that in your time, in your work experience, or in your possibilities, that you could be somebody's mentor like that, or have a mentor like that work with you. Because don't we all want to grow and enjoy what we do.